Hello everyone and welcome back to Strange Wonders. As always, I'm your host Mr. G. Well, I'm finally back after being knocked out for a long time. After looking on YouTube, I found out that basically all the videos I'd planned to make were already uploaded. So that's convenient for me, so now it's time we transition back into Strange Wonders, I guess. What are we talking about? Well, today, we're talking about three animals who use their back as a defense mechanism. Well, not their back. Things they have on their back. Well, not shells. Uh, uh, so, uh, things that are all over their backs. Yeah, there. That's what I meant to say. Okay, let's get into this. Let's get into our trio, starting with the porcupine. Infra order, histricognathy. I think that's how it's pronounced. Porcupines vaguely look like beavers, but without the paddle tail, and of course, covered in spikes, which are actually hardened hairs. There are two main varieties of porcupines, New World and Old World. New World porcupines, uh, live in the Americas, and they are generally more arboreal creatures, being able to climb trees. In addition, their diet mostly consists of uh, things that come from trees like leaves and bark. And appearance-wise, they're a lot more uh, tame with their hairs. Their hairs are a lot more pressed down, they're not as long, and overall they have a more rounded appearance. Old World porcupines live in places like Europe, Asia, and Africa. Uh, they, they are more adapted to ground dwelling than their American cousins. They have uh, more wild uh, quills. These ones are mostly pointed straight up, and their quills tend to be longer than their American cousins. And they have a more varied diet, usually eating more uh, fruit rather than bark. As you probably could have guessed, their quills are mostly used as a defense mechanism. When threatened, the porcupine will ram its quills into its attackers, causing intense pain, especially since the quills actually come off and come into the creature, causing them to have to pull it out. Now, contrary to popular belief, porcupines cannot shoot their quills. However, their quills are very loose, uh, so that's probably where the rumor stemmed from. Maybe someone saw a porcupine shaking around for some reason, then uh, quills fell off, and then they just decided that, eh, they can shoot their quills or something. I don't know. But yeah, porcupines do not have ammo, is what I'm trying to get across here. Next, we got hedgehogs. Subfamily Arena Cena. Again, I hope I pronounced that right. Now, despite their appearance, hedgehogs and porcupines are not related to each other in the slightest. In fact, hedgehogs aren't even rodents. Instead, they're more closely related to moles and shrews. Unlike the herbivorous porcupine, the hedgehog is an omnivore, eating both plants and uh, small animals like bugs. Also, unlike the porcupine, which has a pretty global range, hedgehogs do not live in the Americas. Although fossil records do indicate they live there at some point, they've gone extinct in the two continents. Or one continent, if you're from one of those countries that uh, says that the two Americas are one continent, and therefore Earth only has six continents. You know what I'm talking about. Another interesting thing to note about hedgehogs is that they're actually part is that they used to be part of the now defunct uh, classification system known as Insectivoria. Basically, it was a group that consisted of small uh, animals that uh, mostly ate insects. However, this group went defunct after it was revealed that A, these creatures were not related to each other in the slightest, and B, not all of them had a purely insect-based diet. So the group became defunct and the creatures had to be reclassified. Just like the other two animals, the main defense mechanism of a hedgehog is its spikes. In their case, the hedgehog can actually roll up into a ball, leaving nothing on the outside except its spikes, which are obviously pretty hard for predators to get to. Unless you're a canine, in which case you just pee on the hedgehog, forcing it to uncurl, and, and then you eat it. Yay! The final interesting thing to note about hedgehogs is that when they encounter a new smell, they will rub the source of the smell all over themselves. To this day, no one is quite sure why they do this, but the most common theory is that it's a form of smell camouflage, since a lot of their predators are creatures with good senses of smell, so maybe that helps them blend in or something. That's only a theory, though. Finally, we got the echidna. Family, Tachyglossidae. Now, the echidna is not related to either of the two animals we just talked about. Instead, the echidna's closest relative is the platypus. And just like the platypus, the echidna is an egg-laying mammal. Females lay a single egg and then keep it in a stomach pouch until it hatches. Now, echidnas, like the platypus, look like a weird hybrid of animals. In their case, they look like a porcupine crossed with an anteater. Although, as I just said, they're not related to either of those animals. Now, within echidnas, there are two main groups, the short snout and long snout. 
Short snouted have a have a ant eating diet. You know, they'll eat things like ants and termites if a uh, long tongue, and then uh, yeah, stuff like that. While uh, long snouted echidnas will instead eat, mostly eat uh, worms. Now, another interesting thing about echidnas are their feet. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I said that. Now, first of all, echidnas have very sharp claws and are good for digging, but that's not what's so uh, amazing about them. First of all, an echidna's hind feet actually face backwards. Yeah, it helps with their digging, but uh, still, that's a pretty weird sight. And secondly, echidnas have remains of webbed feet on their front paws. Yeah. Now, this is an example of a vestigial organ, which is a leftover from uh, when echidnas and platypi uh, descended from the same creature. But while the platypus continued to use its webbed feet and became a, pu and became a semi-aquatic animal, the echidna eventually completely lost the need for webbed feet, instead, uh, instead going for a more subterranean lifestyle. But to this day, the webs are still there. Now, admittedly, maybe vestigial isn't the right word here, since echidnas are still pretty good at swimming, but, uh, as burrowing animals, they definitely have less use for webbed feet than their platypus cousins do. So, yeah. Also, there's one other fact about echidnas that I feel like if I didn't bring up, a lot of people in the comments would bring up, but I don't really feel comfortable bringing it up, so I'm just gonna phrase it in the most, uh, kid-friendly way possible. Um, how do I put this? Echidnas have four faucets connected to the same pipe. That's all I'm gonna say, you figure it out on your own. Don't come crying to me if you get in trouble for asking what it means. Okay, let's look at the cards. You know, I find it funny that because the hedgehogs in Tiny Terrors, they had to make it look threatening, but let's be real, hedgehogs cannot be threatening. <laughs> but like, I think that's just a fact. Hedgehogs are not threatening in the slightest. But anyway, besides the fact they tried to make a hedgehog threatening, this is a pretty good card. I can't find any errors here. 10 out of 10. Now for echidnas, I wish they just went for echidnas in general instead of just the short uh, beaked echidnas, but whatever. This is also a pretty good card. So this also gets a 10 out of 10. And finally, we got the porcupine card, which specifically went for the African porcupine. Now one error is that they only listed two species of these porcupines. And, uh, there's a lot more porcupines in the genus Hystrix, and, uh, not all of them live in Africa either, so come to think of it, the nickname African Porcupine is a bit inaccurate. Ugh, you know what? Half a point. This card gets a 9.5 out of 10. Let's get into human relations. Porcupines in some areas are considered pretty pesty because, uh, they eat bark and other plants off of trees and they can make a mess in your garden or things like that. I don't know. I'm not a farmer, so I don't really care. And, uh, hedgehogs don't really do anything to humans and neither do echidnas, so they're fine. Uh, porcupines and hedgehogs are both common sight in zoos. While echidnas are a bit rarer, uh, hedgehogs are decently popular pets, although since in some areas they're considered exotic, you can't have them there. And yeah. Now, as for pop culture, porcupines are a pretty common sight, although to be honest, I can't really think of any named porcupine characters off the top of my head. Um, and uh, as for hedgehogs and echidnas, hmm, what have they been in? What have a hedgehog and an echidna been in? Oh wait, I know! In uh, Alice in Wonderland, they use hedgehogs for croquet balls. And in Pokemon, there's the fire starter Cyndaquil who's based on an echidna, although sadly, he loses the echidna-like appearance when it evolves. Other than that, I can't really think of anything else these two have been in. What have a hedgehog and an echidna been in? There must be something I'm missing here. Was there, like, a game or something? Was... Hmm... What else have a hedgehog and an echidna been in? Hmm... Well, I can't think of anything. I'll get back to you on that. Well, that's all for this episode of Strange Wonders. I need to go find Catherine and Eric. Uh, see you guys next time. Goodbye. Meanwhile... Ha! Read and weep! Full house, baby! Eric, we're playing Go Fish. Oh. Well, then forget what you just saw. You know, Eric, I've been thinking about the story that I told you earlier, and uh, to be honest, the more you think about it, the, the less things actually make sense about this whole situation. 
Uh, what do you mean? Well, they found the skeletons for all the other family, but they didn't find it for the cr creature or the girl. I already told you that. But what I'm wondering is, if the creature really killed the family, why didn't he just kill the girl right away? Why, why is he saving her for later? And also, we're pretty far away from that island, so why would he drag her all the way here? Well, maybe he's just eating her one piece at a time or something like that. Yeah, but the dates also have me wondering. You know when this whole thing happened? Nearly 30 years ago! So why would the creature keep something he wants to eat alive for nearly 30 years? I don't know, maybe he was just a slow eater. But then why would he kill the family almost instantly? Why would he save one of them for later and then all of a sudden become a slow eater? Not to mention, I noticed the girl doesn't seem that freaked out about this whole thing either. Which is also weird to me. Like, wouldn't she be more scared if there was a creature who was constantly eating at her legs? But she seems confused at worst. Well, I don't know what to tell ya. Except I got another full house!